the technology of catalytic fusion developed by Dr. Les Case is one of the most extraordinary developments we have in the cold fusion field. He has excess heat, massive excess heat, and also helium-4 production. The very nuclear ash that the opponents of cold fusion uh, demanded in the early days. It appears as though he is very close to having a self-sustaining device that will keep hot by itself, generate steam, hot water, perhaps electricity, before much longer. Alchemy, the idea that lead can be turned into gold, was always considered a medieval myth. While modern science has proved that transmutation of elements is possible, the process is far too costly to be practical. Yet as early as 1992, scientists experimenting with cold fusion observed in their spent cells small amounts of metals like copper, silver, and zinc that simply shouldn't be there. Kevin Wolf, a nuclear physicist, incidentally, made many measurements of tritium. Then he got some even more astonishing results as early as 92, which were these transmutational results. The the metal forming another metal inside the electrode, you see, which was super, super anti-paradigm. Um, you know, there's that dreadful word alchemy, which we mustn't use, but it, it was a form of that in a way, that it was creating new metals, you see. Tadayoshi Omori and Tadahiko Mizuno of the Hokkaido University in Japan produced volumes of data documenting the production of metals from iron to platinum. Along with these, consistently, came the production of excess heat energy. The potential environmental benefits of this technology are awesome. Companies like SETI, Trenergy, and the Cincinnati Group are developing ways to solve the world's radioactive waste problem, changing radioactive materials into some other form of harmless metal. In 1999, developments in this area prompted the DOE to award a research grant to Professor George Miley of the University of Illinois. However, within days of the grant announcement, the ever-vigilant critics of cold fusion science attacked Miley's work and killed his funding. On the secret panel set up to repeal the grant was the ardent enemy of cold fusion science himself, Dr. John Hizinga. Nuclear energy was once a laboratory curiosity. So let's assume that these devices can be developed. The future is then almost unlimited. It could be the end of the fossil fuel age, the end of oil and coal, and the end, incidentally, of many of our worries about global pollution and global warming. While the environmental challenges faced by the U.S. often make front-page news, the pollution problems encountered by third world nations and countries relying exclusively on fossil fuels fare much worse. Two-thirds of the cities has problems in pollution and one third of the land of my country is damaged by the acid rain. The 80% of the power energy source is from coal. We have 1.2 billion population and we anticipate it will be one half or more billion in the middle of next century. We consume one ton of the coal per capita. So, if we increase our power assumption, our power consumption by a factor of three, then we will burn about five billion tons of coal in the middle of next century. What is the ultimate potential of cold fusion technology? It has been estimated that 250 miles of coal cars could be replaced with as little as one pickup truck full of heavy water. The daily waste from a 1,000 megawatt cold fusion plant would be approximately 150 grams of helium, which is harmless compared to some 30,000 tons of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and other wastes produced by a comparable fossil fuel plant. What I like about cold fusion is it is different from thermal power, hydroelectric power, or nuclear fission power because it is potentially small and the investments required are much smaller. And 
hopefully it can be mass produced by industry. And this completely changes the whole concept of power generation, cons distribution, consumption. I think the electric power grid will, will absolutely wither away. I think automobiles, trucks, trains, planes, all forms of transportation will use this new powerful energy source. The writing is on the wall. The fossil fuel age is about to end. Every day, the burning of fossil fuels contributes to the destruction of our environment. While the breakthrough discovery of a totally clean, virtually unlimited energy source languishes in obscurity. It's history in the making, what we're living here. I mean, I, can't, I couldn't dream of a situation like that. Despite a decade of experimentation and a body of indisputable evidence, the gatekeepers of official science continue to deprive us of a technology we so desperately need to be proper stewards of our world.